It's Thursday, October 17th, right now on 12 News at 10. I'm Gabriella Becerra in the newsroom. A Valley woman was killed the day before her graduation. Tonight, we're speaking with her best friend about how she'll be remembered. Charges now being dropped in the case against a deaf man with cerebral palsy who was punched multiple times by Phoenix PD. Rain and snow chances going up for Friday. I'll have an hour by hour look coming up. And work is officially underway on Arizona's first Bucky's location when fans can expect the grand opening. 12 News at 10 with Mark Curtis and Caribe Devine starts now. We begin with breaking news. This is a live look at the Loop 101 southbound near Indian School Road where a serious crash is causing a big backup there. Now this is what the scene looked like a little bit earlier. DPS tells us that a vehicle rolled over and that one person was taken to the hospital where they later died. Troopers are still investigating what caused the crash, but you will want to avoid that area as troopers continue their investigation. In just a matter of hours, the high country will likely see its first snow. What? Yeah, how about that? Here we go of the season and then rain down here in the valley. You remember what that's like? I do. Thanks for joining us with 12 News at 10. I'm Troy Hayden. Mark's off tonight. Yeah, that's all good news and I'm Kadiva Devine. Tomorrow is a weather impact alert day as temperatures begin to plummet. So let's get right to meteorologist Lindsay Riley with what we can expect overnight. Hi, Lindsay. Hey, yes. We are tracking some of that shower activity beginning to move in and you can see some of that rain beginning to push into Mojave County. Now it is going to start off as rain and change over to snow as some of that colder air pushes through. As far as the timeline around the Flagstaff area, we will start to see this push in during the overnight. And you can see a lot of dry time for the afternoon hours, whereas in the White Mountains, it's going to take a little bit longer. Notice the peak is at about 2 p.m. tomorrow, and we will see a little bit of accumulation around the White Mountains. But here in the Phoenix area, we can expect some um, rainfall during the morning drive. As you can see there, it peaks at about 6 a.m. So we will track this hour by hour coming up in my full forecast, Karibe. All right, Lindsay, thank you. Developing tonight, Maricopa County attorney Rachel Mitchell is dismissing charges against Tyron McAlpin, the deaf man with cerebral palsy who Phoenix police officers used a stun gun on and punched multiple times. The whole thing caught on body camera and surveillance video. The officers say that McAlpin never told them that he was deaf and ignored directions to stop. So just within the last few hours, McAlpin's attorney releasing a statement saying in part, quote, we are grateful to MCAO for dismissing these charges. We are disappointed the city of Phoenix allowed the charges to be brought and for it to go this far. The Phoenix Police Union, though, also releasing a statement saying it is appalled by Rachel Mitchell's decision, adding, quote, what has transpired over the past week is an ugly smear campaign against Phoenix Police. The department's internal investigation into the officer's actions still ongoing. A Valley woman just hours away from graduating with her master's degree when she was killed by a man she had recently broken up with. 12 News journalist Gabriella Becerra spoke with her loved ones and Gabby is joining us now in studio with how this young woman is being remembered and Gabby this story is just horrific for this young woman and her family. Absolutely tragic and Monet Newton's best friend tells me she remembers their last conversation so clearly it was the night before Monet was found dead and the two spent the call laughing and giggling as Monet prepared to celebrate one of the biggest moments in her life. She was just a beautiful soul. Monet Newton's bright smile and bubbly laugh lit up every room she walked in. We could literally just look at each other and could read each other's minds. Like she was genuinely like a sister to me. By 24 years old, Monet earned two bachelor's degrees and had just completed a master's program at Grand Canyon University, the same place where Monet and Michaela Clemens grew from freshman year roommates to best friends. She'd be working and I was supposed to be doing homework. Sometimes we wouldn't be doing either one of those things. It would just be talking about random things and just laughing. I miss her laugh already. Monet's loved ones were preparing to celebrate her success at a commencement ceremony this week. Her family arrived at the airport on Tuesday, but Monet wasn't there to pick them up as planned. That's when Michaela found Monet dead in her apartment. Glendale police say 22 year old Chase Cooper allegedly shot and killed Monet before turning the gun on himself. Monet and Cooper had been in a brief romantic relationship that ended days before their deaths. 
She had so much life left to live. Michaela tells me Monet had high career goals, but even more, she wanted to help people. She was so sweet, so nice, so caring and attentive to everyone and all their feelings. Michaela hopes Monet's loving demeanor will carry on in her legacy. Everyone loved her. You could always depend on her. She was there for you no matter what. And a GoFundMe page was created to help uh, Newton's family pay for those memorial expenses. You can find a link on our website, 12news.com. In studio, Gabriela Becerra, 12 News. All right, Gabby, thank you. New at 10, the man accused of shooting two people in South Phoenix earlier this week is now behind bars. Phoenix police say that 49-year-old Refugio Jimenez shot and killed 29-year-old Rashad Johnson outside of an apartment near 7th Avenue and Southern. A 32-year-old woman was also shot but survived. Police say that Jimenez fired a gun and was wearing body armor when he was arrested. Police have not said what led up to the shooting. Also new tonight, the driver who police say caused a deadly crash in Buckeye in June has now been arrested for it. 18-year-old Nathan Scheides, indicted by a grand jury on charges including second-degree murder. Officers say he was traveling more than 100 miles an hour when he crashed into a tree near Main Street and Verado Way in Verado. And you can see the wreckage there. 18-year-old Yuritza Vasquez died in that crash. A 15-year-old boy <clears throat> excuse me, was seriously injured. Shida has turned himself in to Buckeye Police. A specialized team of first responders from right here in the valley returning home from the southeast after helping with all that destruction caused by Hurricanes Helene and Milton. That's right, Arizona Task Force One returning around 3.15 this afternoon from a nearly three-week-long mission. The 49-plus members were welcomed home by fellow crew and family. Chief Chris Healy sharing that being face-to-face -face with that kind of destruction is humbling. I've been uh, deployed with Arizona Task Force One uh, seven times now. This time I went out as a task force leader. Um, what's going to stick with me the most on this one is just the sheer scope and, and scale of this incident and the amount uh, of, of uh, impact that the storms had across that part of the country. In fact, Chief Healy adding that because of the devastation and the amount of rescues, the department is offering crews mental health services. Records detailing Democratic Senate candidate Ruben Gallego's 2017 divorce from Phoenix Mayor Kate Gallego are now public without any major bombshell. So this comes after a conservative news outlet fought in court for their release, and the Gallegos took their fight to keep them private all the way to the state Supreme Court. Hundreds of pages of records provide few new insights into what happened, showing Gallego filed for the divorce when his wife was very close to giving birth to their son. Gallego had asked the court to keep the record sealed to protect his son now. Portions of the records detailing custody of the child were redacted, and we have more posted right now on 12news.com. Meanwhile, the race for the presidency continues to heat up. Both campaigns are keeping their focus on Arizona. Donald Trump Jr. held an event in Mesa today campaigning for former President Donald Trump. On the Democratic side, both second gentleman Doug Emhoff and former President Barack Obama will be holding rallies for Vice President Kamala Harris tomorrow. The second gentleman will hold his rally in Yuma. Former President Obama will be in Tucson for his event. 12 News will have live coverage tomorrow on air and streaming on 12 Plus. And if you want to vote early, you can still do that. You can request an early ballot all the way up until October 25th. But if you do that, you've got to be quick because October 29th is the last day you can mail that ballot back. After that, you have to bring the ballot to a drop box or a polling place. And you can do that all the way through Election Day, which is November 5th. Now to a story that you'll only see on 12 News. A Valley veteran is making a difference through his art. Christian Klingiller, a disabled veteran, found peace in painting, a career that he never expected. Well, now he has his own gallery in Scottsdale. 12 News journalist Chase Golightly spoke with him this afternoon and has his story. We've all heard the saying, art heals. That's really what I try to go for, is a soothing texture. For Christian Klingler, it's what helped save him. It's really therapeutic. Klingler suffers from PTSD and depression following his time in the Marine Corps. I was in the Gulf War and I was in Somalia. He went on to become one of the first federal air marshals following 9-11. Then he became a law enforcement officer. People don't realize how tough it is, you know, to be on call and to arrive to a situation you don't know what's going on and you know you got to respond and act and react. 
It was that immense stress and trauma he endured for so long that brought him to the edge. I was at my darkest hour. That's when he was given a piece of advice that changed his life for the better. My therapist told me to do something that's calming and, and relaxing, and I always pictured oil on canvas to be very calming and relaxing. From the moment his brush touched the canvas. It was uh, like a calming wave just washed over me because you take your mind off of whatever you're stressing about and you just kind of throw it on the canvas. For the first time, he felt a sense of relief. With the support of his wife, Klingler continued painting. Through dedication, he made a career out of it his art getting picked up by a publishing company, and he recently opened his own gallery in Old Town Scottsdale. So to have a gallery now here is just unreal. It still doesn't feel real. It's, it's a dream come true for sure. His dream also helping others. So that's why I do donate to PTSD and anxiety research through every cell of my art pieces. Wanting them to feel the same sense of relief he did the moment he picked up that brush. It's freeing in a way. In Scottsdale, Chase Golightly, 12 News.